Some of you are probably thinking about graduate school in computer science, and some of you might be tempted to use departmental rankings to help you make that decision. And today I'm gonna to talk about why that might be a little scary. So first I wanna start with a cautionary tale. So last November, the US News & World Report put out a new ranking of all the computer science departments in the, in the whole world. The Computing Research Association, or CRA, immediately put out a statement warning people to ignore these rankings because this ranking is complete garbage. You see, it all depends on the metrics you use when determining your rankings. US News & World Report had measured journal publications through the web of science, which might be fine for biology or chemistry, but in computer science, our most prestigious publication venues are conferences, not journals. So essentially, this ranking is meaningless. They measure the wrong thing. It would be like if I ranked NBA players according to their bowling scores. That might be interesting and it might correlate to some Thing, but it definitely doesn't tell us who's the best basketball player. So the CRA asked them to take it down. Unfortunately, they didn't. So for people like me that spend their lives in the CS research world, this isn't a big deal. I know this is complete rubbish. It's not going to change my opinion. For students, it's a little dangerous because students often use these listings to make important decisions in their lives, and they may not understand what went into the rankings. So if this ranking is garbage, which one should you use? And that depends a lot on what you're trying to get out of it. If you're looking at graduate school, especially if you're looking at a PhD, you may want to step back a minute. For a PhD student, the most important decision really isn't the university you go to, it's the professor you end up working with. A PhD is basically a research apprenticeship. You find a mentor, you work with that mentor a lot, and your end result is tied very closely to that mentor. That mentor is by far the most important variable in your success or failure in your PhD. And if you end up working with an advisor that you don't really like working with or who does research that you're not really inspired by, four to six years is a long time. Yes, great universities have great professors, and that's why those universities are so prestigious. But it's still very possible to go to a great university and not be able to find a research advisor that you want to work with and who wants to work with you. And that can still leave you in a really bad situation. For future PhD students, you really need to be looking at people, not institutions. Institutions are great, and that's definitely a variable, but that research advisor is really the most important thing. And you should probably plan on contacting these professors and actually talking with them before you apply, just to make sure that they're interested as well. And this advice is definitely less relevant if you're looking for a bachelor's or a master's degree. Those degrees are more tied to the courses you take. Still, so whatever kind of program you're looking for, uh, one ranking system that I recommend you look at is csrankings.org. So csrankings.org was made by a friend of mine, and I think it's great. They're not paying me to say nice things about it. In fact, I don't think they make any money from the site, so anyway. No ranking system is perfect, this one isn't either. But the thing I like about csrankings.org is that it's transparent and it's simple. You can actually understand what it means. You see, it ranks departments based on how many publications their faculty members have in top conferences. So the publications that actually do matter, and this isn't the whole picture. Obviously, there's more to being a great institution than just having people who publish great papers in great places, but it's a useful metric because it's a really hard thing to game. Getting publications into top conferences is really challenging. It also correlates with doing really great research, which for future PhD students is something that's really important to you. For master's and bachelor students, I'll let you decide how much that matters to you. The other really cool thing about csrankings.org is that you can actually go through and select topic areas you care about. So you can see which departments have people that are really strong in particular subfields. So if I want to find somebody in machine learning, programming languages, or operating systems, I can do that. I can just rank schools based on that. The other thing that's really cool is if you click on a particular school, you can look, it'll actually show you which of the faculty members were factored into that ranking. So for those of you that are looking for a PhD advisor, this is a really useful way to find people who are doing really high impact work in a particular research area. It's not perfect. You should still read up on what they do. Go to their webpage and actually read their papers and see what they do to see if you're interested. But this is at least one way to find people and it might be a good place to start your search for a PhD advisor. So anyway, that's all I have for you. I hope that's helpful for those of you that may be looking at department rankings and for those that are thinking about graduate school. And until next time, I'll see you later.